up the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you with grateful hearts. We've discussed and shared how much you mean to us. We've discussed and shared what it means that you are faithful and true. We think we understand that, but we only get a glimpse of that. We will see it more clearly one day, and we know that. I am in awe. I am just in awe of what you have in store for us, for those who love you and believed you and received you. I am in awe. And I just give you this morning, I give you my words, of course you know that. I give you my heart most of all, that it's wide open to receive anything that you have to give to me and to these wonderful women. And I ask you to temper every word. Open our eyes because there's going to be wonderful words and there are going to be terrible words spoken this morning that come from your word, which is true. Bless us, teach us, revive us, and send us out to share this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessing, message, news that you have given to us with all of those around us. And we thank you for that. And in your blessed son's name, we pray these things. Amen. Okay, I want you to remember these words. We've got, it's Sunday and Friday both today. You remember that lecture? It's Sunday at first, and then it's going to be the great white throne judgment, which is probably the most sobering, disheartening, saddest, unbelievable part of Scripture to me as I read it. And I, I see I see God's heart breaking. I don't know if any of you watched um, The Passion before Easter. I try to make that a habit because and it's hard to watch. Don't, I mean, I'm like this part of the time, but I think I have to know what he went through to know what he did for me. And as you watch that, and his body is being ripped to pieces, and he's being spit on and jeered at, and all of those things happening, I have to know that that was the purpose he came to this earth for. And I have to cringe when I think of those who ridiculed him and spit upon him and disclaimed him and didn't believe him. I shudder for them. I truly shudder for them. To, and it goes on today. But I want you to remember, Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. We know that. How many times have I hammered that? Resurrected. Reigning resplendent, ruler, revenging, and redeeming. That is how he is portrayed in this book, Revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to start out with the Millennial Kingdom. And you know by now, because we've talked to it a lot about it a lot, Millennial Kingdom is a thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ on earth. And it has been amazing to me, and I will not give you all the scriptures. I hope in your homework you look up many of them because you will see how incredible this word of God is, is because this has been prophesied through all of the Old Testament. This second, in fact, more written about the second, I think it's eight to one references of this second coming of Christ to the first coming of Christ. Now, this is what I love in Isaiah. We think this is a Christmas song. And we sing it, and we read it for Christmas. And the first part of it is the Christmas message, but the last part is the Millennial Kingdom. So listen to me as I read Isaiah 9, 2. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. That's his first coming. Now his second coming, the Millennial Reign, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne. And right now I'm gonna throw this little tidbit at you because I'll at you because I won't be able to go into it. David will be a co-regent with Jesus Christ in the millennial kingdom. Old Testament scriptures back that up. Now he will not be in the first place, but David holds a very special place in the kingdom of God, and he will be in that part of reigning that thousand years with him, as we will be which is an exciting thing. I don't know what that means, but we will come and we will rule with him during the Millennial Kingdom and other groups too. 
He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on. And